appreciate you folks uh, joining me. When I left off on the uh, little Peter Pan radio from the early to mid-1930s, uh, a couple viewers uh, noticed I had unmatched uh, knobs on there. And uh, I believe looking at another example of a uh, Gilfillan radio for the same period, this is the uh, correct uh, knob. And again, I've only got one of them, but this one's in uh, perfect shape. And uh, that lends itself to do some uh, molding and casting. So I've been wanting to do that for a bit now. Um, I've done it in the past, but uh, not using a high quality product. So uh, what we'll be doing is taking uh, this knob, which is in uh, really, really good shape, and uh, we'll create a silicone mold. And then uh, we'll try to uh, cast a, a new knob or uh, reproduction and uh, somewhat you know match the uh, the color as well so here's my plan again I'll be uh, actually building the mold here creating the mold again uh, using some platinum cure silicone rubber and uh, this is just a uh, discarded or would have been discarded applesauce uh, container I believe is what came in this and I've cut the bottom out here with a razor and uh, tried to sand it nice and uh, flat this size works perfect for this knob. The uh, particular vendor that I'm using, and I'll get more into uh, detail in just a bit about the products that I'll be using, uh, they like to see a half an inch outside of your model that you'll be casting. And uh, this gives me uh, just over one half an inch, and my uh, fill line will bring me up almost to the top here. So uh, once I get this thing uh, glued down here, I think it will be uh, perfect for this particular uh, knob to create the uh, mold that I'm looking for. So uh, my plans um, are to use this lid here, and I'll probably just leave it attached to this quart container. I'm going to go drill a uh, one quarter inch hole here and attach my knob. And I may put a flat washer here on the uh, bottom side uh, just to make sure that um, I've got a nice uh, flat surface here. I'm just afraid when I tighten this down, you can see uh, the movement I'm getting here in the plastic. I tell you, sometimes you get lucky and you just have everything that you need, but you guys just saw there in the picture and picture, I just drilled a, a quarter inch hole here in the top of this lid. And again, I went and uh, found a, uh, a quarter inch uh, bolt that I'll use, and you can see I've got a, a nut on it. And uh, let's go ahead and get one washer on. We'll place this here on the uh, bottom side as such, and then uh, I'm going to attach the other washer here. So the idea again is I'll have a, a nice flat surface here once I attach this down to cast off of. So I um, think it's a little more rigid there than the uh, plastic itself, so I think that'll work well. Let me uh, go ahead and get this tightened down here. So I think this will uh, serve me well. If it doesn't, uh, we'll back up and uh, try something different. Next step is, again, let me get the old uh, glue gun here going. And uh, we'll go ahead and kind of center this as close as we can by eye. And I'll go ahead and get a, a bead of the uh, hot glue down around this area and seal it. And then uh, we'll get started uh, mixing up again the uh, Platinum Cure Silicone Rubber. Okay, a little sloppy, but I think that'll work there. Had a little problem there getting that uh, old glue gun to go. Alright, real quick, you can see everything has uh, set up and I think it's uh, dried. And again, I think it's uh, ready. So uh, up next, I want to go ahead and put some of the uh, Ease Release uh, 200. It's a product made by man. And uh, I'll show that in just a moment. And then you can see as well, I've got my uh, cups already made up. Again, for the uh, silicone rubber mix that will, again, mix by uh, volume, not weight. And um, I think I uh, measured this right. I think it was just under uh, four ounces. And again, I probably cut a good quarter of an inch or so off of it. So um, I'm hoping my uh, fill lines that I have are adequate. So uh, I'm just uh, a little more than one ounce of uh, part A and B. And hopefully that will get me up here close to my uh, estimated fill line. 
Here's the uh, mold release product again that I'll be using. It's uh, made by man and you can see it's the Ease Release 200. And uh, when I was reading the directions online, um, and I'm going to go back and double check my notes, I'm pretty sure it said to let it dry uh, 30 minutes. So uh, I think I'll go 30 and uh, just air on that side. But again, I'm going to follow these uh, directions here to a T. They're pretty straightforward. All right, not much to that uh, particular part of the uh, process. Again, I just followed the uh, directions there. Put a uh, misty coat on or two, and then I just took the uh, brush here and uh, tried to get around all the uh, locations, especially inside the area there where you've got the uh, tap screw itself and uh, around the uh, pointer area. And then I just followed up as they uh, recommended there with a light misty coat. We'll let this uh, dry as they uh, recommend here for a, a period of 30 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll pull out the uh, silicone and uh, get started uh, mixing it up and uh, pour it in here and uh, go ahead and get this uh, particular mold created. i tell you why we're waiting here for this to uh, go that uh, total 30 minutes. Um, let me uh, show you the product I'll be using here to uh, create the mold. Uh, you can see again I'm going to be using the uh, Smooth On product. There's a lot of great videos out there and their web page is phenomenal. Um, I sat there and watched uh, numerous videos, read all of their uh, technical information, and uh, they just make it easy. Or what I hope is going to be easy. Again, this is my uh, first try using the product. But uh, one thing I can say is how professional um, they are. Um, their response back to me, I opened a ticket and had a response back, uh, same business day. Uh, so phenomenal support and uh, I was kind of overwhelmed when I first went to their web page and uh, looked at all the different uh, you know silicone molds they have and then when it comes to the casting material which we'll cover in the uh, second video uh, I was kind of taken back just by you know the amount of products they have so um, you know just one of their uh, professional associates uh, worked with me based on my feedback and uh, recommended again I start with this product and there's another recommendation as well if I don't get the uh, results but uh, again I think just uh, for the hobby itself I think uh, this product you know should meet my uh, needs again assuming I apply it correctly the other big advantage I believe of uh, using this they just make it so simple to work with I think I've downloaded now and saved all of their uh, technical articles and uh, watched their videos. So I think if I follow uh, their steps, um, as they uh, indicate, uh, we should get uh, good results. But uh, time will tell. And again, you can see here they've got the uh, directions here on the back also. So again, I just wanted to uh, share that. That's what we'll be trying here in the uh, first go. And again, this was more of one of their smaller samples. I didn't want a lot of material. Two things. I don't have that many knobs to um, actually to cast, but uh, I do have, um, you know, that, uh, was it the Grunau or um, uh, the other radio escapes me right now that I need some uh, knobs for. So, um, you know, that'll be my second try, but I wanted to go ahead and just try first here on these little plastic uh, knobs here for the uh, Peter Pan radio, get those wrapped up, and then we'll try to cast a... Uh, a wooden knob which will be a little bit different process so here's what's in the uh, box on the uh, little sample uh, piece I got you can see I got plenty of material uh, the net weight on this is one pound each for part A and B so uh, I think that's going to allow me to do all the casting that I need to do for the, this period of time and uh, something else is important just to take time to familiarize yourself and you know all this information is available on their web page as well you know, just take time to uh, read through the uh, safety data sheet or what used to be referred to as the uh, you know LMSDS uh, sheets I think it's uh, overly important and then uh, these are the uh, directions and again this was available for uh, you know, download as well, and I've already read this and made my notes, and uh, I knew I read somewhere about the 30 minutes, so uh, this is where I picked up on that, even though the directions on the uh, Man Ease Release 200 recommended 5 minutes, they're saying light mist coat and let that release uh, dry for a 30 minute period, so uh, at least I know I'm not uh, losing my mind, and I did read it somewhere. 
So uh, I'm going to read back through these again. Uh, just to make sure I've got the uh, steps down in my head. So when I get ready to start, uh, we can just kind of stay on a roll. Uh, pour the material, and again, we'll have to let it uh, cure for a period of time. And then uh, we'll come back and do the demolding and uh, see what kind of results we get. All right, that uh, 30 minute period has passed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here and uh, get this mold created. Um, one thing when I was doing, I was reading online, it said definitely to uh, premix uh, part B. But then when you look at it, um, it also says stir part A uh, thoroughly as well before mixing with part B. So um, I would imagine you'd want to do that inside this container um, before you, you know, pour off. And then, of course, I can also do a little more mixing of uh, part B um, prior to uh, mixing it with part A. So I'm not sure if that's right or wrong, but that's what I'm going to do is, uh, again, just stir these up individually uh, to make sure before I pour them into my individual uh, cups here that, um, you know, they're pre-mixed well. Okay, again, I'll start out here with uh, part A. Let's get it open here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stir this really well. And uh, one thing I did notice, too, when you read the directions itself, um, it's said to use uh, plastic or metal, you know, glass or something, not wood that had a lot of humidity in it. And I've tried to get the humidity as low as possible here, and I'm going to seal these back up as quick as I can out here in my uh, garage, but uh, drop the humidity down uh, really low. But uh, let me go ahead, and it doesn't say how long to stir this. I think that would probably be good enough right here. And I'll go ahead and pour off the amount that I need here in my uh, A container. Let me get another shop towel and clean up my mess here. Let me go ahead and get part B open here. All right, let me get uh, part B here mixed up well. And go ahead and pour the uh, quantity we need here. All right, I think I've got uh, parts A and B pretty equal here. And I'm gonna go ahead and stir part B here just a little more. And I'm gonna pour uh, part A into part B. And it says uh, once I get everything in here, we'll stir it for a, a period of uh, three minutes. The other thing it says is to uh, make sure that you've uh, scraped the sides well and the uh, bottom. So uh, I'll just make sure I do that along the way. All right, we've got uh, two minutes left. Okay, I'm uh, seconds away now from uh, three minutes. Seems like a long three minutes here. And uh, we'll get the mold over here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and pour it in here. And again, it says to start at your lowest point, so that's what I'm going to try to do is just aim over here for the uh, side and kind of pour from a high level. And uh, hopefully I've got enough uh, material. If not, I'll be uh, starting out all over again. Yeah, it looks like my uh, material that I needed is going to be extremely close. I may have could have used just a bit more, but uh, again, this stuff's really thick. So I think if I just continue to hold it here, it'll continue to uh, pour. Okay, now the uh, fun begins. We'll uh, just let this set up for the uh, recommended period of time. We'll come back and uh, check our progress and uh, see if we can get this uh, to demold from the uh, model part. Again, that being the uh, knob itself. And uh, just see how it looks. Again, uh, no big deal. If this doesn't turn out well, we'll, uh, we'll go a second time. It's been 90 minutes now, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, demold. Again, they recommended 75 minutes, uh, roughly, for uh, something this small. So I think we should be good. 
Let me go ahead and get my uh, cutters here. I'm going to just cut down the uh, side. Okay, I got this cut back. Now let's see if I can get in here and get this loose. Here we go. Looks like a uh, pretty good mold, actually. Yeah, I probably should have got a little bit more mold release up there where that set screw resides. But uh, that came right out. You can see the uh, definition there itself, so uh, I think that'll work uh, just fine. And it looks like my uh, material that I used, I got the depth that I was looking for. So again, I was shooting for about one inch. And uh, you can see each one of these uh, grids here is uh, one inch from here to here, half an inch here. So um, just about the uh, right amount of material as well. So we'll let this uh, set up for a bit, then uh, let's do a casting and uh, see what kind of results we get. Here's the uh, look at the mold again. And again, I think it looks uh, fairly good. Um, you know, being that I just used um, the mold release on it, um, I may hit it just with a real misty coat. Because I would be concerned about uh, releasing right in this area where that set screw is uh, located here. Uh, let's see, and other than that, I think that's it for the uh, mold release. Now, here's the uh, product that I'm going to use. Again, it's uh, more of the uh, smooth cast, and again, this was recommended by the uh, professionals to try. And again, it's the uh, 326 smooth cast. So, again, I'm going to shake these real well per their recommendations. And then I'm going to add a little bit of their uh, UVO uh, coloring or pigment to part B here. And um, my eyedroppers were, um, I can't locate them, so I ordered some more and unfortunately they were supposed to be here um, a few days ago and uh, it won't be till next week. So uh, I'll come up with another way to uh, get a few drops of the uh, black and a few drops of the brown and try to match the existing uh, knob here best I can. This is a really dark brown with a little bit of black. So again, this is just the first try. Um, now one other thing I'm going to do on the mold itself is uh, once I, uh, again, mix part A and B and get the right uh, color. Um, you can see I've got a piece of plexiglass cut with a uh, quarter inch um, bolt and I'm going to just lay it on top as such in the center and again I'll use some mold release on this as well and that will keep me from having to uh, go back and actually drill that hole. I'll just make it uh, part of my casting, or at least I'll attempt to make it part of my casting. But uh, I think it'll lay there well. My uh, fill line, and it may be hard to see uh, on camera at this angle, but again I had that flat washer there, so it'll be just below that. So I've probably got um, maybe a 32nd or 1 64th of an inch or so um, to work with. And my uh, fill line will be about to this point. So there shouldn't be any of the uh, liquid plastic there touching, you know, this uh, piece of plexiglass if I get it right. Now again, I know when I push this in, I'm going to have some come back toward me, so uh, I'll have to use uh, less because I'll be pushing again some of that material uh, back out of the uh, mold itself. So uh, let me go grab another cup as such. And, um, you know, I'm going to just have to guess here on the volume. I know it's just very little material, so 
I'm going to just put a line down here somewhere really small and actually I may look for something uh, smaller uh, to mix um, these particular uh, the Smoothcast 326 into uh, but let me uh, research that for a minute and see what I've got. If not, I'll just use these cups and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Again, I've already got those uh, pieces of uh, aluminum foil there, the tin off the top of it. And again, it says to go ahead and shake these. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And you can see I'm just guesstimating here on my uh, line that I want to go to. I think it's going to take very little product. So, uh, I'll probably end up with some waste here. And again, I'm just trying to uh, guess here on the amount of product. Alright, I think that's good for uh, part A. And I'll do the same here for uh, part B. You can see again I've got a uh, guesstimate there on the uh, fill line area. All right, let me uh, compare these here where I can see them together. All right, I'm going to add just a little more of part A. I'll clean these up here in just a bit. All right, the next step is to add the color to part B. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out with the brown. And I'm going to take a uh, paintbrush here and kind of stir this up. Then I'll grab part B, and guys, I apologize, this may not show up on camera. I'm hoping I can just get a drop or so in here. So that's one, two, three drops so far. Four, five, six, seven, that's eight, and what I'm shooting for here is about ten is my understanding, so we'll see if that gives us enough or is that going to be too translucent. See what I'm going to do is just lay that down and then I'm going to stir this up real quick and just see what it looks like. Hopefully you guys can see that there on the camera. And I've got my uh, tinted safety glasses on, probably not the best thing. But I'm going to try to compare this to the existing knob you know and it doesn't have to be exact but um, try to get it as close as I can all right now let me add the uh, black in there I'm gonna pause this just for a minute because I want to reuse this let me just wipe this off real well then I'm gonna dip right into the black and uh, put maybe two or three drops in there okay, the same thing here I'm gonna stir this up just for a moment and let me see if I can just get maybe two drops or so, then we'll compare. Okay, there's one. Two. Three. Let me stop right there just for a moment.
Well, it's amazing how quick I was able to get that just with three drops of the uh, black. And that may be what I'm looking for. Should have taken this knob loose, but uh, you guys probably can't see that well under the uh, lighting conditions I have. But uh, I think I'm uh, going to just go with that. Again, this would be my uh, first casting, so uh, let me just continue to stir this up for a minute. And I can tell right now I've got probably way too much, uh, you know, material. But it would be fun to maybe let uh, parts A and B dry, and then uh, we'll compare the uh, results. Again, let me just continue to get this mixed up really well, like they say. And I'm going to look at this uh, color one more time. I'm going to pull my uh, safety glasses off here and look at it under some different light. And uh, just compare the uh, results here. flip on a different light here and just check things out. Okay, well if it works out, get my safety glasses back on, I think we'll be good. Again, it was about 10 drops of the uh, brown and 3 drops of the uh, black. So we'll just go with this and see what happens. Alright, I think that's mixed up well. So what I'll do is, um, should have done that, I'm going to just go ahead and pour A back into B. this up here for uh, probably uh, two or three minutes well. I don't think they specified the amount of time. It was just making sure everything was mixed uh, well. Okay, I think that's been long enough because I don't know. I don't think my uh, lifetime here is that great. So uh, let me just be cautious here. I'm going to try to pour from a higher elevation here because I won't be doing any uh, vacuum um, degassing or anything, so uh, see if I can just get a stream here and pour it in and not make a big mess. Try to get it here too where you guys can maybe see it. Was I ever so right on not taking much material? Okay, let's see if this uh, displaces enough uh, material here that it comes to the top. And that looks pretty close. Okay, there you have it, uh, folks. I'm going to just let that be. I'm not sure if I've got, uh, you know, that bolt centered correctly or not. That may not be the best approach. I may be better off just uh, drilling my uh, holes after the fact, but uh, you don't know unless you try. So I uh, thought I'd just give this a try, see what happens. But uh... Okay, guys, let's see if we were uh, successful here. It's been about uh, 30 minutes now, and I think we're at a point where we can uh, actually demold this because this is my uh, leftover material, and it's starting to uh, cool down. Man, it got extremely hot. So uh, again, it will take uh, a good 24 hours for this to cure, but let's see if we can get this to uh, release now and see what the quality of the uh, reproduction knob looks like compared to the original here.
Okay, there we have it. I think it looks uh, looks pretty good at a glance. And again, I've got lacquer on this knob. And I used a little bit of toner. It's a little bit of a uh, little bit more red tint. So I may try to actually hit this one after uh, everything cures for uh, 24 hours and uh, try to do the same. There's a, a few little bubbles or imperfections there, but I think I can uh, sand those out. Or actually, if I apply a little toner lacquer, you won't even see it. So hopefully that's uh, showing up there on the camera. It turned out uh, fairly well. Not bad for my uh, first casting at all. Again, I wanted to be cautious because I've only let this uh, set up and did the demolding 30 minutes into the uh, one hour cure recommendation that you can see. I used a little mold release and then I'm able to uh, just kind of back this back out. There we have it. So uh, maybe not quite perfectly in the center, but uh, I think uh, good enough here for my uh, first casting for sure. Alright, I'm going to set this aside and uh, let's just let it uh, cure now for uh, 24 hours. And we'll take a look at it. I think a little light sanding there will knock down some of those uh, small imperfections and just a bit of toner. Just like I applied to the original knob here. We'll, um, I'll be able to match the uh, colors. So um, let's just do a comparison. Reproduction here on the left and the original here on the right with some uh, toner lacquers applied. Not bad. Alright, I'll continue everything in uh, part two. Thanks again for watching folks.